to the spirit of Christ. We thank God for his loving kindness. We thank him much for his grace and mercy. Thank you. We thank the Lord for a divine revelation of who he is. Yes. We thank him for how he revealed himself first to the prophets. Mm -hmm. And for how he came into the world and ministered the gospel himself, revealing thank himself you. to the apostles. Yes. And we are grateful that he continues to minister to us even now thank by you. the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> yes. We'd like to invite your attention to the book of Romans. Romans, the 15th chapter. Romans, the 15th chapter. <clears throat> and we'll uh, get verse 4. we we'll add a few other scriptures as the Spirit permit. Romans chapter 15 and uh, beginning at verse 4. Romans 15 and 4. And the word of God says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So God left on record a, a, a divine blueprint yes. uh, for how we are to worship him, for how we are to please him. Yes. Uh, so there is no excuse uh, and all throughout the scriptures, we, we, we find where the writers, or particularly Paul, would say, I would not have you to be ignorant. Mm -hmm. Or I don't want you without this knowledge. <clears throat> and then Jesus said himself, he said, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. For they are they that testify of me. Uh, but we find now that men want... Uh, information and they want revelation from every other source but the word of God. The word of God is the only authorized uh, uh, the, the only authorized documentation of God's mind. And, and, and here uh, lately uh, people want to challenge the Bible to uh, say that the Bible is, is just something that man wrote. Uh, there, there's too much in here. No man would write this and condemn himself. Amen. I know good and well if I were to write a Bible, it certainly wouldn't have. There's a whole lot that would not be in him. <clears throat> so the Bible says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Now we ought to uh, read the Bible and study the Bible and learn from uh, the people that are recorded in the scriptures. We are to learn from their successes and, and learn from their failures. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, He that believeth on me as the scripture has said. Yeah. So now, we don't have an excuse. Mm -hmm. You know, I, as, as I often say, everybody that winds up in hell won't deserve to be there. Because there's, there's a Bible here. Mm -hmm. And there are God sent preachers, albeit not many, but there are some true preachers of the gospel that will, that are laboring and expounding the word of God in the correct manner. Yes. Now you just have, you have to search them out. Yes. Uh, you know, unfortunately they, they may not be in a, a fancy cathedral with, with stained glass walls, mm -hmm. stained glass windows and, and whatnot. Uh, uh, they, they may not be in, in, in uh, you know, just a magnificent edifice. Mm -hmm. you know, they may not have uh, eloquent speech, you know, using big words and, 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 and have, uh, 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 you know, tight, big fancy titles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the word of God is going forward. Yeah. And it's up to you to receive it. Amen. <clears throat> In fact, Thank one you. place the Bible says, <laughs> study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed. You know. Thank you, Jesus. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. And he said, Take my yoke upon me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yes. And we can learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. We can learn what his likes are. We can learn what his dislikes are. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Okay, go now, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen, amen. 
1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll just start reading at verse 1. For whatsoever written before time was written for our learning. So we can learn from the mistakes that uh, uh, our forefathers made. You know, and we can learn from the successes that our forefathers had. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and at verse 1, the word of God says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. <clears throat> but, but watch this at verse 5 now. At verse 5 now, and remember now, for whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning now. Mm -hmm. so, so now at verse 5 here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, at verse 5, the Bible says, But with many of them God was not well pleased. But with, with many of them God was not well pleased. Okay, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning. Now, we are to, to examine what made God not pleased with these people and not repeat the same uh, 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 mistakes, as it were. You know, uh, yeah. learn from their, as I said, learn from their mistakes and also learn from their successes. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, okay, verse 6 now. For these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. This, this was an example. Yeah. Thank you. We have a pattern. You know, or sometimes you will buy uh, uh, like a, a shelf or something, and uh, it comes with instructions on how to put it together. Amen. And of course, sometimes we get uh, arrogant and ignorant and don't follow the instructions Amen. and wind up with screws left over. Yeah. But the, 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 the shelf or, or, or cabinet or whatever it is, it, it's shackling. Yeah. It's not sound as it would be if had you followed the instructions. Yeah. You know, uh, when you when you buy a car, they give you a maintenance book. Mm -hmm. You know, and it has a suggested maintenance schedule. Yeah. You know, at, at so many miles, you should have this uh, done. At so many miles, you should have this checked. Mm -hmm. You know, and when when you buy a car, it is it's recommended, mm -hmm. uh, albeit it's a little more expensive, that you take that car back to the dealership, mm -hmm. so you can get uh, 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 authentic parts. And you can get a certified uh, mechanic, a certified, uh, you know, Toyota mechanic, or a certified Chevrolet mechanic, or what have you. But yeah. but many of us, of course, we want to go the shade tree route. You know, somebody that just work on cars on the side, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, because uh, we're trying to save some money. Mm -hmm. But the, and, and oftentimes, it doesn't work out right. Amen. They, you end up in a bigger mess. Than you were originally. Okay, okay, now so so the Bible says in chapter uh, verse six now, now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Now, now we have to learn. Of course, we learn the children of Israel how they uh, uh, made a golden calf. Yeah. <clears throat> and God wasn't pleased with that at all. Yeah. Amen. You know, and, and we can become <laughs> idolaters. Uh, idolatry simply means to put something and esteem something or somebody higher than you do Christ. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Look, okay, look at verse 8. Now the Bible says, Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. 
Whatsoever was written aforetime time was written for our learning. Don't, don't, we shouldn't be a, a, a whoremongers. There's a remedy for, for every situation in the Bible. The Bible, you know, Paul will tell us here, in, in, if you drop back to the 7th chapter of 1 Corinthians, he says, uh, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. Now, if you want to go there, you need to marry who you're frolicking with. Just go on and get married. Yeah. And you not there's no sin then. <clears throat> Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. Like I said, there's no excuse now. Amen. You know, there's no sin that anybody commits, it, it has a valid excuse. Sin is simply, uh, you know, as I as I told you, you know, several years ago, sin is, is just the, the inappropriate response to a desire or need. You may have a valid need, but there's a correct way to respond to it. You may have a burning desire, but there's a correct way to respond to that desire. Yes. Amen. And verse 9, now the Bible says, Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Verse 10, now, this is a big one here. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmur. You know, just sitting around complaining. We, we have so much to thank God oh, for. Yes. Amen. And you look back over your life, some of the mess that God got you out of. But we tend to, to minimize the victories and the successes that we've had in God and magnify the, the problem. I'm going to tell you something, man. When you find yourself down and out, when you find yourself down, you know, you may be in a bind, but if you just go back and start thinking on the goodness of the Lord, yes. but that, that'll, lift, that'll lift up your spirit. You'll start feeling better, and you'll start expecting to have victory. Yes, But we do the opposite. We sit around and complain, woe is me. No, no, God has been too good to, for, to me. He's done too much for me. He's delivered me over and over again. So if I find myself in a bind, I expect to come out. I expect to come out. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. That's the trick of the devil. He wants you to believe that, okay, well, this time, okay, yeah, 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 he, he, you, you were delivered that time, but this time, he, he, I mean, look at it now. Okay, at verse 11, now the Bible says, Now all these things happen unto them for examples, or examples, and they are written for our admonishment. Whatsoever written aforetime was written for our learning. They were written for our admonishment, upon whom the end of the world are come. So, so now, they, this, this stuff was recorded for a reason. Verse 12, wherefore let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. That's why we got to go back and look at this stuff. Yeah. Verse 13, verse 13. Now, now watch this. Now he says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to of it, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. That whatever you're going through, somebody somewhere has gone through it already. And I and you, you often hear me say there's relevant and pertinent information in this Bible for every situation that you might find yourself in. And the word of God is real. You can put the word of God on every situation in your life. <clears throat> But see, people don't believe, the problem is people don't believe the word of God. And one of the, the, one of the, the uh, biggest issues that people have, with the, that God has with people, is the lack of faith. I tell you often, faith is the keys to your car now. It's the gasoline for your car. Whatever, it doesn't matter, you can have a fancier car that you want to have. You can have a Lexus, you can have a BMW. Uh, Mercedes Benz or whatever it is, if you don't have any keys, if you don't have any gas, you're not going anywhere. The Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. 
He says, without faith, Hebrews 11 and 6, you don't have to go there. He says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, so, so, and that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to doubt God. He want, he, he's attacking your faith because he knows you can't please God without faith. Okay, go now to Exodus. Amen, amen. Go to Exodus. Um, Chapter 13. Look at something over here. Exodus chapter 13. Praise all. Exodus chapter 13. And uh, we'll begin reading at verse uh, 17. Exodus chapter 13 and at verse 17. Exodus chapter 13 and at verse 17. Amen, amen. All right, and the word of God says, And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although it was near, it was closer. For God said, Let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Okay, okay. So so now it was a closer route. But God God has our best interest in mind. So we have to trust that. We have to have faith yeah. that God knows best, knows better for, for us. He knows what's best for us. Yeah. So so now he said, God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although it was near, it was closer. For God said, let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. When things get a little rough, mm -hmm. they want to, you know, they want to run back. Yeah. You know, that, that's something that I, I just don't understand. I, I don't understand that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I come out of sin, come out of darkness. Going back is, is just not an option. I know that going back, there's, there, 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 there's hell and destruction. Yeah. So, and, and unfortunately, a lot of people have this mindset that when they, you know, they repent of their sins and then they confess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they're baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and testify of the Holy Ghost and things get difficult, things get rough and yeah. uh, well, it just seems like you know, I mean, I had better off when, when I was, before I even started coming over here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, how, how were you better off? Mm -hmm. The greatest blessing that you can have is to have your name written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why he told us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Hallelujah. Of course, there's nothing wrong with having nice stuff, but you 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 can't have your soul tied to it. Oh yeah, thank you, Lord. So when they say you know lose a job or something, oh it it is. I, I mean, I look like I had it better. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. So so okay okay now he says uh, God led them not. Through the way of the Phil the land of the Philistines. So he, he it was a shorter route, but that would have been they would have had to fight a lot more. Thank you know. Thank you, Lord. Although it was near. For God said, Let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Whatsoever was written before time was written for our learning. Oh, look at verse 18 now. And the word of God says, but God led the people out through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harness out of the land of Egypt. But now, now God led them on the route that they were on. God led them there. I think about this, you know, uh, the story of Joseph, you know, over in Genesis. 
how Joseph faced test after test, trial mm -hmm. after trial, and the Bible always said, but God was yes. with him. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Sold into slavery, mm -hmm. but God was yes. with him. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and so, and we just have this natural tendency to think that because somebody is afflicted, because somebody is going through a rough patch, that somehow that, that God is not in them. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. But because all you got to do, look at Job. Mm -hmm. The Bible said Job was a perfect man. Yes. Amen. And Job, uh, oh my goodness, we know, we, we know the story of Job. But Job never once thought about turning around. Amen. His wife did. When his wife came to him, to him and said, "Why don't you just curse God and die?" He said, "But well, you, you, you speak as a foolish woman." Yes. Job, see, when we need to adopt that mindset, Job said, "Though he slay me, yet will I trust him." Yes. Gotta have faith now. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Yes. But there are going to come some moments in your life, there are going to come some moments uh, on this road that your faith is going to be tested. Your faith is going to be tried. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, yes. go into uh, uh, Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. And we'll pick it up at verse... Number uh, 18, number 8 rather, Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 8. Exodus chapter 14 and at verse number 8. And the word of God says, uh, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And of course there's one place in the Bible, where the Bible says, that, where the, the Word of God says that the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. Yes. You know, I don't know where we get this this mentality from. That okay, now that I'm serving the Lord, everything is just going to be easy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where that came from. You can't be reading this Bible. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Watch this. And he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook the encamping by the sea, beside Pahathra, beside Belzephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of it, look, 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 look now. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the, unto the Lord. Now that, that's okay, cry to the Lord. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? My Lord, look at verse 12. Look at verse 12, though. Is not this the word that we Tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Now juxtapose that to all of the miracles they had just witnessed, all of the plagues. They had just seen the hand of God on their behalf. They had just seen God's hand. Ten plagues. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's how we get. 
We have seen the hand of God on our behalf. We know God is a healer. We know God is a deliverer. We know God is a way maker. But yet, something comes up and somehow we forget all of that. He said, just let us alone. You should have left us alone that we could serve the Egyptians. And they're out there crying out. 400 years, they're crying out. And God raised up Moses. Uh, now, they, 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 they've seen all of, they've seen the hand of God. They, uh, they, they're out. Yeah. On their way to the promised land. There's some folk out there, you know, that they, 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 you've been delivered. Yeah. I've seen this. Folk, they were, I mean, they, they were out. They were down there. They were on drugs. You know. They come in, you know, and God clean them up. God save them. And a little difficulty come, and they go back to the dope. What? I don't get it. They go back. Going back is not an option for me. There's nothing in my past that can help me. Is it not this the, is not this the word that we tell thee in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? You know, I, I remember reading uh, the memoirs of, of Harriet Tubman, uh, you know, and she how she um, uh, would come down in the south on clandestine missions and, and she would uh, uh, help slaves escape. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> she said she carried a revolver because every once in a while, you know, uh, there would be a couple of slaves that would want to go back. Mm -hmm. you know, but sometimes they would have to go days without eating. And, and uh, you know, uh, so it would be cold and whatnot. Yeah. And she she all she there was there were a few times she had to pull that revolver out and said, You not going back and either you come with us or you die. Mm -hmm. And that that's the mentality that we have to take. I remember when I was a little boy, they used to sing a song that said, I'm gonna make it to that city. If it costs me my life. Don't you know you will be better off dying in the Lord than living in the world? Uh, pa Paul said to die is gain. To die is gain. <clears throat> is it not the word that we did tell the in Egypt? Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto them, watch this, Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today Ye shall see them again no more forever. Well, look at verse 10. Look at verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you. The Lord shall fight for you. And ye shall hold your peace. Just hold your peace. See, we start looking at things from our perspective, from our might. But the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Yeah. Now, how could Moses be so confident? How could Moses be so confident? Well, we'll go back to, we're going to drop back, and um, we'll go back to verse 1 of, of, of chapter 14. We'll go back to verse 1, and we're going to see how Moses could be so confident. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Exodus chapter 14 and verse 1. Now remember the subject, whatsoever written before time was written for our learning. Okay, it, uh, Exodus chapter 14 and verse 1 now. And the word of God says, And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Palhara, between Malgar, Migdal, between Migdal and the sea, over against Belzee, Belzephon, before it shall ye camp, before it ye shall ye encamp by the sea. Watch this. Now, look, 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 look at this verse 3 now. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. This was all a part of it. This was all a part of the process. They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. God sent Pharaoh, some of the mess you're in, God deliberately put you there so he could show you his power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh. See, if you know within yourself, and you have to be just be honest with yourself, did I do anything to cause this? And if you can honestly say, no, I didn't, then it's a part of God's plan. It's a, it's a part of God's process. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he should follow after them, and I will be honored up I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hopes, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. Mm -hmm. This was all a part of God's plan. God planned for Pharaoh to pursue them. And it was told to the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And I, I, I tell you often, nothing happened except God allowed Nothing can happen except God. God allowed God heart God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Because he made ready his chariot and took his people with him, and he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and the captains over every one of them. Look look at verse 8. And we started, we started off at verse 8 and said, And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. This was all a part of God's plan. Yeah. See, see uh, uh, the Lord will come in and snatch a job away from people. Because he, for 25 or 30 years, and then God moved you into something better. But he had to take you out of your comfort zone. See, some of you, when you when you when you got laid off, you went back to school. You never would have went back to school if you would have stayed on that job. Amen. It's all a part of his plan. So, okay, back at verse uh back at verse 13 now. Verse 13. Exodus chapter 14 at verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. Moses could speak this because God had already showed him what was going on. Do you really think the Lord will pull you out of the world? He will pull you out of fornication. He will pull you out of drunkenness. He will pull you out of getting high to fail you. Do you really think that? Pull you out of robbing, pull you out of stealing, pull you out of selling dope to fail you. As the old, old song said, I don't believe he brought me this far to live. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see. Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, mm -hmm. ye shall see them again no more forever. Mm -hmm. The Lord will fight for you, yeah. and ye shall hold your peace. 
the Lord is going to fight for you. And, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou to me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Go forward. Going back is not an option. Just go forward. And that's where faith, that's where faith has to come in. Faith has to come in. See, faith, faith is not supposed to make sense. Thank you, Jesus. Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Going back to Egypt is not an option. Go forward. Okay, watch this. But lift up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. The children of Israel shall go on dry ground in the midst of the sea. And I behold, I will even harden the heart of the Egyptian, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. It's a part of the process. But now, don't sit around and murmur and complain. Now, you know for yourself, if you put you, if you orchestrated the difficulty that you're in, you, you know. But if you can honestly say, I did the best that I can. I done all I know to do. And you find yourself in a tight spot. Relax uh -huh. and let God be God. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Now, now if you put yourself there in a, in, 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 for being hard-headed and disobedient. Yeah. Yeah. But did I, did I move? From the voice of God? Or did I do something because I wanted to do it? Did I trust God? Nobody ever said that trusting God would be easy. I mean, now you can listen at this foolishness that you hear and see on so-called Christian television if you want to. That if you send these idiots some money, that somehow, you know, they're going to pray over your prayer request and it's just going to be smooth sailing. No. Did you hear the voice of God? Did you pray about what you're doing? Did you pray about what you did? And, and you know for yourself if God led you to the point that you are in. And if, if, if you can honestly say that I believe with every fiber of my being that God directed me to this point, he's going to get you out of whatever mess you're in. He's going to get you out of whatever mess that you're in. But you have to trust him. Yes. He's going to fight for you. Mm -hmm. He's going to fight for you. You have to trust God. Thank you. Amen, amen. We'll leave it right there. We thank God for you. We thank God for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus. I hope I said something to help somebody. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord.